Hi, Roger McGill is here with Prasad Malenke, who's the CEO of One Convergence. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Roger. So, what are the uh, you know, kind of main obstacles and gaps for people deploying AI, and how does One Convergence uh, work with that? So, our our product and the, and the company is focused on um, mostly on the deep learning, but we d we do cover generic AI, AI ML too. Uh, but where we are focusing on is operationalizing the infrastructure. So what that means is uh, taking a data scientist, as data scientist gets onboarded, how do you kind of make that whole process very efficient? So if I look at the, the and we are very much focused on the enterprise and on-prem, right? So if I look at where they are, there are there are a few gaps. One is on-prem as, as a, has been kind of uh, the area operationalizing that has been a, is a major gap, uh, particularly around this whole machine learning area. Uh, the cloud hyperscalers have done a very good job at operationalizing. They have like hundreds of people, maybe thousands of people, looking at the infrastructure, making it very efficient, and uh, making it very easy. But on the enterprise side, it's not there yet. And now you combine that with deep learning, uh, where it requires a lot more Okay. I mean, it has more features, more capacity, uh, more hardware. It's, it's, it significantly uh, increases the, the whole complexity of it. Uh, so those are the two gaps. What we see, what we, what, where we, where we kind of look at it, and then say, how do you kind of take the environment where enterprises are used to? Uh, making it more like a CI/CD process they're used to, uh, and then and then make it like efficient that way. So that's the, that's basically where where we look at the gaps are. Mm -hmm. So this is your DQ, product, correct? Right? Um, and so, where's your vision of where kind of ML ops is uh, is going, and what? So we are looking at a, where the product where we are looking at is this kind of kind of solving it end to end, as opposed to kind of taking a point and, and of, of a particular operational things and then doing solving that. So what I mean by that is, if I look at it, in a, in, a, in a, when you operationalize uh, deep learning or ML. There are three parts. One is a rapid prototyping, where the data scientist comes on board and then kind of rapidly kind of creates a model. Then the model, once it kind of is satisfied with it, he wants to run through the whole training process, which is called what, what I call productionization of the model. So that is that that's that's another significant piece of running across the whole infrastructure. It could involve sometimes one, two fifty, as many GPUs with like a lot of storage access and all of that. And the third one is once you're done with the satisfied with the model, now you need to put it into production. With the, one of the things of AI is that at least in this process, it's a continuous process. It's not like once you kind of go into production, your data might not be exactly the same thing as your, what you trained with. Therefore, you need to recognize is my model going to be is decaying? In which case, you need to come back and then say I need to retrain again. So this happens in some industries. It's pretty much continuous. Right, it's like happens like on a daily basis because new objects come in, so you have to retrain and all of that. So now, how do you make this whole thing efficient? How do you make that so that you can take the whole operations headache from the data scientist, right? So, so, so that's basically what we're trying to do. So we're trying to address the whole end to end of mm -hmm. this whole the whole process. Okay. So how does DQ compare to your competitors? And in this open source world, some of them are. Are probably free. So absolutely. So Dcube, in terms of there are one is we are kind of built it right from the get go. We participate heavily in the community. Uh, so there's a there's an open source project called Kubeflow, which is basically we are built on top of it. Um, and the second part of it is there are other open sources we can incorporate. One is the TensorFlow. We are very kind of highly optimized for TensorFlow. Uh, while we support other machine learning infrastructures, but TensorFlow has been our prime focus because that's where a lot of distributed kind of uh, uh, deep learning is is very high implemented very well. And the and the third part of that is uh, um, uh, and we are built for we are built on top of Kubernetes. So that means uh, right from the get go, we looked at it and then said uh, we want to build on a cloud native infrastructure so that it's kind of mobile, it can kind of suit the hybrid environment. Well, while on-prem is highly optimized, you should be able to move between the clouds and things like that. Um, and those are the few, and then most of the ML infrastructures that have been developed before these open sourcing have happened or kind of build the infrastructure. So we kind of okay, built it on top of the existing, what the community is being going towards, right? So that's the big advantage of what we see. And then we are hardening 
So, from an open source perspective, open source solves very well in terms of like 80 percent of the way. What, but enterprises, especially in the deep learning area, you need to integrate with their security infrastructure, their storage infrastructure. You need to optimize for that. And then these are like, I mean, large expensive machines. So, how do you kind of deal with that and operationalize that? So, that's where we kind of differentiated and also kind of kind of compete with various products in the which are, which are there in the market. Mm -hmm. So you mostly focus on on-prem, and given how much the public cloud has become a thing the last few years, uh, why the focus on on-prem and what? Well, public cloud is great, right? So, so the, the way we see it is a lot of people kind of start off with public cloud. They go to public cloud very quickly, get it up and going. Um, there are few reasons there. One is there is a compliance, regulatory reasons where data cannot leave the on-premise, so in which case you do need your compute where the data is. So our notion is take your compute where the data is. Whether it's on-prem cloud, it doesn't matter. Just kind of execute the compute environment where the data is. So so from that point of view, then the second part of it is can, it kind of gets expensive as the data increases. So your storage requirements, your compute requirements, and, and all of that become very expensive. So between those two things, what we feel, that's where we are kind of trying to focus on and then make it work. Mm -hmm. so. so what did you sec sectors do you focus on? I, I can make some guesses given the on-prem. Right, so one big area is of course uh, healthcare and pharma and all of the, those where there's a lot of drug discovery going on, there's a lot of images, data. Um, the second one is manufacturing. So people are looking at like video data, can I use the video data, can I make it really efficient, can I discover new things, the, the defects and things like that. So those are the two kind of areas, but there are other areas which are kind of security and those areas which come into play too. So, mm -hmm. but, the, but the focus for us is on the health, one is of course the pharma, healthcare, and the second one the manufacturing side. Great, well thanks for your time today. Thank you, thank you very much Raju.